So Alabama comes up just short against Michigan in the Rose Bowl in a game that we have not only got to break down and talk about, we also have to ask the question, what comes next for Alabama? But before we can, as always, y'all know the drill. I have got to hear from you. Hop down to the comments. Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. Are you surprised by the result of the game? And then secondly, do you think we're about to see some portal movement from the Tide? Can't wait to hear from you. But if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell notification. I do constant college football content. You don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoyed the content, be sure to like and comment down below. But having said all that, let's jump right into this. And first, let's talk about the game. And in my opinion, it was a fantastic game. I love defensive games like this where both defenses are able to generate stops and give their offenses opportunities. And through the game, we saw both offenses able to capitalize on the opportunities given and several instances of the offenses not being able to capitalize. For Michigan, you had the special teams mishaps. For Alabama, you had the fumble. You had the bad snaps all game long. One team was able to finally get it done in the end, and that was Michigan. So what happened during this game? Well, first and foremost, hats off to Michigan's defense. They came into this game as the number one defense in the nation, and I think they showed that ranking was absolutely due. Alabama's offense struggled to find anything through the course of this game, and then in the third quarter, they were able to get things going. However, at the point where they were able to get things going, you had several bad snaps, which completely derailed drives, and then you had an untimely fumble when Alabama was trying to put the game away. You're not going to have mistakes like that against top four teams and be able to come out on top all too often. You have to take advantage of the opportunities given, and both teams had instances of being able to do so and instances of not being able to do so. Like I said, for Michigan, those missed field goals really hurt the Wolverines. For Alabama, the fumble, your bad snaps, derailed drives. And if you have a team with a defense like Michigan, you need all the successful drives you can get. If you're playing Michigan and the defense is that good, you need to beat them straight up. You don't need to be playing Alabama and Michigan, and Alabama all too often got in their own way with these snap mishaps. Now, heading down through the game, it was a thriller, and when Alabama got to overtime, there will be so much talk about that final play call because it seems to be a head-scratcher, and I don't have any of the answers for you, but it is certainly a play call we will talk about for years to come. At the end of the day, I think if you're an Alabama fan, you need to be very proud of the season that the Alabama Crimson Tide had. This was a team that after week three, I don't think anybody in college football had making the college football playoffs. Even more so, I don't think that they had them being a team that could even win the SEC championship. Yet, Alabama not only won the SEC, they made it to the college football playoffs. And that alone is a fantastic season for the Tide. Not the result that they would have wanted, but at the same time, I think we need to be real and give acknowledgement where it's due, that Alabama had a fantastic season. There are only four teams that make the college football playoffs, and yes, they would have loved to have won. Yes, they didn't help themselves in that game, and yes, Michigan's defense was able to derail a lot of what Alabama's offense wanted to do, but at the same time, they made it to the college football playoff in a year where I don't think anybody had them doing so after week three or four. But what comes next for Alabama? And this is where we have these conversations about the transfer portal. Because as we currently sit, Alabama's scholarship or projected scholarship per Mike Rodak is somewhere in the mid-90s, but you can only have 85. So some portal movement is to be expected. Remember, we talk about this all the time. The transfer portal giveth, but the transfer portal taketh. But today I'm really interested to see what movement we see and what names we see entering the transfer portal. I think that there are going to be some guys into the transfer portal that everybody sits back and acknowledges, yeah, that makes sense. But I think that we will also have some surprises because what is college football without surprises? Who those names are, I'm not quite sure. But if we look, Alabama has got a really loaded quarterback room with several quarterbacks that love their ability. That's a room I'm watching. I'm watching the wide receiver room. I'm watching some of these rooms because so much talent is there. And Alabama continues to recruit at an incredibly high level. If we look at the quarterback room, they just brought in the number one quarterback in the nation, Julian Sayan. So this is going to be something we have got to sit and watch. But at the end of the day, don't be shocked whenever Alabama loses players to the transfer portal this year. Because once again, the transfer portal giveth, the transfer portal taketh. And Alabama is over the scholarship limit once their class gets in. They are bound to lose players to the transfer portal. How many remains to be seen and who also remains to be seen. But at the end of the day, 
it is going to be expected that several Alabama players hit the transfer portal and test the waters. So it's going to be interesting. We will be covering all that as it happens. Hop down to the comments. Let me know players you're watching to see if they enter the transfer portal and let me know what you thought of the game. That's it. See you.